Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Jason here. Today I have a playthrough of Castle Panic, the big box version that as I post this video is going to be in late pledge form over on the kickstarter.com. So go ahead and check it out. Check it out if you want to take a look at this game for one to six players, fully cooperative or solo. There is a semi-co-op mode where you can defeat monsters and whoever beats more monsters wins, but we're not gonna talk about that. <laughs> Here on the One Stop Co-op Shop, it is all co-op all the time. So I'm happy to uh, bring you this card-driven, uh, bag-driven, this is where the enemies are, and everything else that has to do with this tower defense game, gonna have a full playthrough for you. A couple of things to note, this is prototype form. So I will be showing close-ups of the different towers and walls and monsters and, so, and such things, whatever I received as part of this prototype package. So please keep in mind that final components will look a little bit different. And also note that I'm going to be playing a game with all three included expansions, the Wizard's Tower, the Dark Titan, and Enders of War. We'll see if I can keep everything straight. I'm sure if I make a real mistake, I'll be, have no lack of people who can quote unquote help me <laughs> in the comments with uh, rules correction. So it's all good. But before I get to the playthrough, please join us with the fun at the One Stop Co-op Shop, you're on the YouTube. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. We also have a streaming channel. Please sub to that uh, attached to uh, our YouTube. So the streaming channel is also on YouTube. We have a podcast. A uh, podcast is over 200 episodes strong and we are not slowing down uh, twice per week oftentimes. Uh, design discussions and coverage of the latest co-op games, but also above the table conversations of things around gaming lots of good discussion available there please stop by our discord discord has lots of community members who are always willing to talk treat each other well we have a uh, very much enforcement of safety rules and it's interesting and it's exciting and it's very supportive to be a part of our discord and it's completely free if you want to purchase additional tiers or access to additional tiers, go ahead and check us out on Patreon. Patreon is our place where we raise funds so that we can bring you more solo and co-op goodness, uh, but you don't have to contribute. If you want to participate in the normal Discord, you can go ahead and check the show notes of this video and join us over there. So without further ado, I'm going to give a quick rundown of the rules for Castle Panic. It won't be as detailed as I normally do for rules rundowns because so much of this game comes out of the decks and the bag and that will emerge as we play the game, but I'll explain everything that you see on the table and then come back and play Castle Panic big box version. All right, so as I said, I'm not gonna get into a full rundown of the rules. I'm just going to explain what you see here on the board uh, enough to get us started and I'll explain uh, things as they come out uh, in the course of gameplay. Okay, so this is the entire area and this is your castle. Your castle is made up of some spires over here and I am showing a 3D printing of the six spires that are uh, your defense. Uh, also here are the 3D printing of the wall. There are six walls corresponding to the six towers. Normally there would be uh, just six towers and they will look exactly the same, but I'm playing with the Wizard's Tower expansion, which has this, which generates the Wizard card deck. I'll show you that in just a second. All right. So this is the circular board. Looks like a target with concentric circles. It's with three zones, red, blue, and green. The beginning setup has six monsters uh, that are predetermined in a uh, the archer ring. So then uh, from turn to turn, the monster is going to move forward. So move from the arch to the knight ring, the knight to the swordsman ring, and then eventually attempt to attack uh, the castle. So as you can see, I do have some of the monsters at least have the 3D miniatures. You can go ahead and check that out. Look at that. Uh, as they are damaged, they are going, you're going to be able to reduce their hit points. So it'll go from three to two to one, and then eventually uh, dead. So this is an ogre right here or actually this one's a troll but for the monsters that i do not have minis for are going to be using their their token that comes out of the bag so as i damage them it will go three two one and then done so uh what's going to happen is at the beginning of the turn uh, i as the defender are going to get the resources with which to defend my castle 
So this is my hand of cards. And as you can see, like red swordsman, green archer, blue knight, the cards, uh, the vast majority of them are going to correspond with the different areas of the board. So with my green archer, I would be able to do damage to a creature in this archer ring. The card is basically useless for any other uh, area of the board. So being able to manipulate your hand to have the cards you need to, to defeat the monsters where they are is going to be the key to victory in Castle Panic. There are a lot of different cards, but again, I will show you those different cards as we move through the playthrough. So then at the beginning of the round, you are going to draw up to your hand of cards. And in a solo game, the, the maximum hand size is six cards. And there is going to be a draw and discard phase in solo, which I'm, which I'm playing. You'll be able to uh, discard twice and draw twice. So let's say I have a card here like Red Swordsman. This is a useless card for me now. So this would be a perfect uh, candidate to be discarded. And then hopefully I can get something better from the Castle, from the castle Panic deck. On my turn, I can play as many cards as I want. In the multiplayer game, there are even cards that let other players play cards, or you might be able to unlock that ability by playing cards and telling that person, you go ahead, you attack and you play your cards. There is a lot of variety with what can come out of the deck. The main goal being is to do as much damage as possible, try to take out monsters so that fewer and fewer of them make it to the center. After you play your cards, you'll uh, pass that part of your turn, and then the monsters are going to move forward. Every monster on the board is going to move forward once. Some of them have different rules. They move forward faster, or they may hang out, different things that they do, but for the most part, the monsters just kind of close in on the area. And then, the last part of the turn, you are going to go into the handy dandy bag full of these triangular chips. You're gonna draw two new ones, and then play proceeds. There is all sorts of stuff in here. It might just be no monster, but you might discard some cards. Or it might be a directions to move monsters around. Or since I'm playing with the expansion content, all sorts of crazy stuff can come out. Uh, so uh, once again, ch uh, check out the playthrough to check out some of the stuff that is in the improved multi-expansion Castle Panic game. All right, so I have zoomed in on my player area over here. So this is the main deck where all the Castle Panic uh, attack cards are gonna come out. So mostly you're gonna be drawing from this deck and I have a, a cards in here from all the expansions. This is the wizard card deck from the first expansion, the Wizard's Tower. How you access this deck is that when you engage in your draw and discard phase, that phase two, you can draw from the wizard deck and these are generally more powerful cards. So damage one monster in any blue ring for one point. Catch that monster on fire. Blue fireball. So fireball it fires a special effect which does ongoing damage, which clearly is more powerful than just one a one-time hit. This is from the Engines of War expansion, which is the latest expansion uh, for the for Castle Panic. What this does is it coordinates with this engineer character over here. So go ahead and check out that art over there. The art, I believe, is final, just the components are not so final. All right, so then with the uh, engineer, you'll be able to use these cards. So there's different resource cards like brick and mortar and rope and that kind of thing. You'll be able to use the engineer to build certain things. Let's say you lose one of your walls uh, because the walls can be assaulted by the monsters. You can actually use this wheel to get them back. In the base game, it would just be brick and mortar cards. And you would get a, a wall back. In this game, you can actually devote cards, uh, place them here, and then over a longer term, be able to reconstruct your keep. So then that is for walls. If you want some advanced weaponry, you have to build the keep, which is a very, very intensive uh, resource right there. The keep is represented by this mini right there. And as you can see, there are two uh, little notches right there. Uh, if I'm able to complete the second phase, which is the either the ballista or the catapult, after I've completed the keep, then I get some advanced weaponry. Boom! <laughs> So as you can see, Engines of War added a little bit of a longer term uh, play. You'd be nerfing yourself because it's a lot of cards to devote to the Engineer, but it's generally worth it if the board kind of agrees with you and lets you build. This last one is from the second expansion, which is the Dark Titan. This is kind of a mega boss, or uh, a mega mega boss boss. <laughs> 
So um, the second expansion added what they called mega bosses, and then this is like the boss to rule all of those bosses. Three herald tokens are going to come out. They're going to um, do different things, and then Agnarok is going to appear. I'm not playing a very hard version of Agnarok, but as you can see, uh, this you can go up to three, four, five level of difficulty. It gets harder and harder, so there's a lot of different modes for Agnarok. All right, I think I am ready to get started with a playthrough of Castle Panic. All right, I'm a little bit zoomed in. I'm ready to begin our castle defense adventure. So the rule book tells me to lay out specific enemies, uh, and I'm gonna use the the tokens here. I'm gonna show you the minis because they're pretty cool in terms of the print, but just on the camera, they end up not really popping, especially in terms of the hit points. So I'll show you the mini, but I'll um, mark uh, generally mark uh, things using their tokens. Just wanted to give you a heads up on that. Okay, so uh, the book does recommend for me uh, a starting layout if I'm playing with all three expansions. So I have a bunch of different characters over here. I'm not going to go into the whole explanation now because I'm going to kill some of them. <laughs> I'll let you know exactly what is going on uh, as we begin. Okay, so I begin with a hand of six cards. Show you what I got. I got mortar because I always begin with at least one resource card. Uh, the Green Knight, I can hit one thing in the Green Knight ring, which is the next ring down from the Archer ring. So I might, uh, might pass on that one a little bit. Uh, green Archer, I'm probably going to use that one now. Red Swordsman and Red Knight, uh, they aren't useful this turn, but they might uh, come in handy. And I'll show you that as I get into it. And then this one, Enchanted. Play this card with any hit card for two additional points of damage to the monster. So it's a buff card comes out of the regular castle uh, panic deck. So that's cool. All right, so now I have a decision to make. I can discard two cards and draw two cards from either the castle, well, either of the three decks, the, uh, the regular uh, castle panic deck, the wizard cards and the resource cards, uh, two because it's solo. And I think I'm gonna get rid of this mortar so I could save up and start building my keep, but in the beginning, you know, you start off with so many uh, uh, tunes over here, so many enemies that I like to kind of get ahead of that, get to a little bit of a lull point before I really stock up on building stuff. So I'm gonna get rid of the mortar, and I think I'm gonna get rid of this green knight. Uh, not that uh, the green knight will be useful next round, or uh, if I let well, a couple of these move through. Uh, yeah, I mean, you gotta, you can't keep everything, right? So I, I want to be able to try to dig through and get uh, more optimal cards. So I'm going to pull from the Castle Panic deck. Ooh, double strike. Play one hit card twice this turn. That is really nice. And then I'm going to pull from the Wizard deck. Valador's Wave. Deliver four points of damage in one color. Distribute damage among as many monsters as you choose. Uh, wizard cards can either be awesome or terrible. <laughs> They're so situational, uh, they tend to be anyway, uh, but when the situations arise, they end up being really good. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to play this green archer with a double strike, play one hit card twice this turn. So I'm gonna play this green archer card twice, and I'm gonna take out this gargoyle. The gargoyle cannot be hit by the knight and the swordsman cards because they're flying. It can only be hit by archer cards. So I got one shot at taking out the gargoyle, and I'm gonna take that shot and it is done. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to take care of that ogre over there. Or not try, I'm actually gonna take care of the ogre. Going to play this Valador's Wave card, deliver four points of damage in one color. I could spread it out to that troll that's hanging out at the six, but nah, I'm sitting there at four points. It has four hit points, so it just goes away. Bye-bye, see you later. I have three cards left and no real uh, use for them. I don't love that. However, I'm going to be able to use the Swordsman and the Knight card next turn. So I'm just going to hold on to that and uh, pass my turn. Okay, so I have four enemies left. They are going to crowd in a little bit and I'm going to pull from the bag. And the first chip I pull from the bag is Chimera! Oh Lord, no! That is a mega boss from the Wizards Tower expan or the yeah the Wizards Tower expansion. Ooh, those are pretty nasty. So this is what the Chimera looks like. 
We're going to spin that to number five hit point check because you can see it's breathing fire over there. And I'm just going to use that mini right now. Where does it show up? It shows up in number six. And then as soon as it shows up, it is going to breathe fire. What fire does, it goes on the wall over here. I know it's a little bit obscured, but as you can see, the wall is now on fire, which means it is weakened. Normally, when a monster runs into a wall, that's not uh, the worst, uh, or it stops the movement, but if it's weakened, then it won't stop the movement, it won't do any damage back to the monster. It's just like a, not a good thing for my wall to be at. All right, so I still have another tile to pull. Let's see what I pull. All players discard one card. I am not a fan of that one either because I had a bunch of good cards. This is the other reason it's good to play all your cards because, yeah, you end up losing some. I was hoping to save this Swordsman because uh, the right here, this uh, Swords, this um, Goblin uh, Shiv uh, Cavalry, I actually moved him wrong. He actually moves two to the swordsman ring. So he's very, very fast. And that red swords had a, I had the kind of a thing for that. So I'm just gonna have to discard something. So I'm going to discard the swordsman and just let him uh, run against the wall, I guess. <laughs> so that could have been better, but we're gonna go on to the next round. All right, on to the next round. I have a hand of two cards the red knight and the enchanted card so i get to draw four more all right drive him back move one monster back to the forest sure okay that might come in handy for these uh, some of these that are pretty close uh, i got a green knight i traded one in so that's a nice card to get back red boiling oil this is a newer card damage all monsters in the red swordsman ring for one point that actually might come in really handy uh yeah so yeah we're just gonna hold on to that one for now and then once again i'm gonna pull that a uh, blue boiling oil same thing so then i am not going to well i'm gonna dis i'm definitely gonna discard this blue boiling oil i don't think i'm gonna need it right now and let me see i think i will just discard the one card i, I, I kind of like the other cards and so i'll just discard that card and get a wizard card Hammer of Light, slay one monster in the forest ring. Ooh, all right. So guess what I get to do, people? Do you see this chimera over here? Hammer of Light, slay one creature. According to the FAQ, or uh, some rules online, uh, slay means slay, even if it's a regular mob or a boss. Uh, so we are going to slay you instantly a uh, chimera you showed up too bad you are out of here that's fantastic okay now we're focused in on red remember i have this goblin cavalry uh sitting right there with two hit points we are going to hit them with some red boiling oil damage all monsters in the red swordsman ring i only have one monster but it gets him down to the point where he's going to destroy the wall but then destroy himself so uh, that's kind of what the walls exist for <laughs> you can't hit everything uh, so that's fine. Here's one that I really wanted to do. Uh, this is Red Knight. Hit one monster in the red ring. This is a centaur. This is from the Wizard's Tower expansion. This one, it's uh, mounted combat because it's a centaur. Uh, it's on a horse. So like when you meet it in the field with another horse character, which is what the knight is. I'll go ahead and show you that picture. The centaur rule is it dies immediately. That's why I wanted to keep the Red, the red Knight around. So that's really cool. Now that troll, I don't like the look of him, uh, and I could wait on this a little bit, but I also want to keep my hand flowing. So I'm going to go drive him back, move on one monster back to the forest ring, keeping it in the same numbered arc. So we're going to get you back. Uh, I don't have the equipment to deal with it now, but it has three hit points, and so I don't like how long that's going to take me. So I'm just going to use that, get him out of the way. And then finally, we have my friend the Goblin Saboteur. It is going to get the Green Knight with the Enchanted Attack. Uh, a little bit of overkill, so it only has two hit points. I'd be able to uh, do up to three damage with this thing. Uh, Would have been nice to pair uh, this enchanted with a blue card. Not get a blue card. Have to play the cards that I get. So uh, this saboteur would actually make me banish cards uh, if it actually hit my wall. So no thank you. <laughs> I like all my cards. So we're going to take care of that. All right, so look at this field. It is nice and clear. 
uh, I'm going to go ahead and move with the cavalry. The cavalry is going to die because it ran into my wall, but at the very least, it destroyed a wall. So you did something, monsters. <laughs> and the troll is going to move forward one, and then I am going to pick two more tiles. And remember, I have an empty hand. I have no cards in my hand. One imp per tower. Okay, that's fun. All right, so the imps, uh, there are a ton of these. This is also from the Wizard's Tower expansion. I have six towers, so I'm going to get six imps around. They only have one hit point, but they, you know, it, it's still like six hit points worth of stuff happening. So we get six of them around the, the field. Eh, that could be better. Let's see, what else do I get? I get a healer. Good to get this one now because uh, it's this is from the base game. The healer shows up and heals everything uh, for one, but I don't have anything that has been damaged. So it's just going to show up wherever it shows up. Let's do a real roll. It's going to show up in arc number six. I believe that's over here. Look at that. I have all these uh, characters waiting for a good... <laughs> powerful spell to just kind of like take care of that whole thing but that's the end of the round all right we're back for the third round of play and i get to draw my full hand of six cards i can draw from the castle panic deck or the resource deck i'm actually going to draw two cards from the resource deck now that the field is clear a little bit i don't like the imps around but i think they're decently easy to deal with so i am going to go for a little bit of progress what i want to do is i want to make the keep nice and early so that I can get that catapult and ballista and get some real offense going. See how I do. Okay, scavenge. Ooh, that's a nice card to get. Search a discard pile for one card of your choice and add it to your hand. One card of your choice. It's the main deck, but there are some powerful cards in the main deck uh, that I have skipped. Blue archer. Ooh, all right. I know what exactly what's going to happen there. And a green knight. That's not so great. And missing... Do not draw any monster tokens this turn. That's probably getting played just so I can, like I said, get that uh, resource thing going. Okay, I got a resource card. I got some brick and I got some mortar. Brick and mortar, baby. I could use the brick and mortar right now to rebuild this wall, but I want to get the keep going. So I don't think I'm going to be doing that. I am going to discard this knight card. Uh, as part of my draw and discard. I can uh, disc draw and discard up to two, but I'm going to do one this turn. Get a wizard card. Green fireball. Damage one monster in any green ring for one point and catch that monster on fire. Sweet. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my scavenge card to dip into the discard pile. I'm going to get enchanted back. Enchanted, play this card with any hit card for two additional points of damage to the monster. I am going to play that with the blue archer that does three hits to someone in the archer ring. High troll in the archer ring of the three hit points. You have zero hit points now, sucker. Get out of here. All right. Uh, I'm also going to play missing, so I don't draw any monsters this turn. That's all right. I guess buys me a little bit of chance. I don't have any... Uh, anything to deal with the imps, so that's not that thing to have to concern about. But you know, they're uh, hopefully I can keep on drawing <laughs> and find something. I am gonna play the green fireball. The wizard cards. This is a wizard card. They tend to be able to target things in the forest. Uh, at least you know if it if it doesn't exclude like hit cards, you have to play, but uh, outside of the forest, like in the inner rings. Here, it's it specifies any green ring. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play that and I am going to set the healer and the fire token means when they're monsters, every time they move, they're going to take one point of damage. So it's going to move twice and burn itself out. Uh, so that takes care of the, of the healer. Still got to deal with the imps, but I think I'm okay for now. The last thing I'm going to do on the turn is I'm going to set my keep. Uh, the keep requires brick and mortar, or all four resources, brick, mortar, wood, and rope. So I'm going to set it to the keep. I have to declare what I'm setting it when I first place resources on there. So I'm going to place my brick and mortar on there. Uh, it stays there. And then next turn, hopefully, I get the things that I need to finish the keep. All right. So I am going to move 
all of these imps. The healer is going to move and burn up for one. And then everything is in the archer ring now. I have a little bit of time because I played that missing card. So I do not pull more monsters this turn. I can gear up and try to uh, get that keep going and, you know, uh, get myself in a better position for uh, the rest of the game. All right, I emptied my hand, which is good castle panic play. Let's see what I get. Blue archer, we know what you're doing with you. Any color archer, oh baby, this is a good streak. Let's see what we got here. Uh, red archer, oh man, this is a... <laughs> Oh man, I'm pretty getting pretty lucky here. Red Knight knew my luck would run out sometime. Uh, let's draw from the resource deck, huh? Let's see what I get. Let's see. Oh, I got the well, some wood that I need and some rope. Oh man, this is actually a really really good hand. Uh, that is, <laughs> I'm actually pretty surprised. Uh, all right, so I can just go to town. I think. Hmm. Even though this Red Knight card would come in handy next turn, I'd still want Discard Fodder in order to be able to uh, reach a little bit more into the Wizard deck. These are just good cards to have. Ring of Fire. Catch all fire, uh, all monsters on fire in all colors of the Swordsman Ring. Ooh, that is actually one of the weaker cards uh, because uh, they, the fire does damage after they move. So if they're in the swordsman ring, they're already like really close, and yeah, I don't. It's just it's good for I guess AOE, but I'm a little disappointed in that pull. All right, so I'm not going to swing the camera over to the engineer, but take my word for it. I'm going to take all four of the resources. This was in my hand. This was on the engineer spot, and discard them, and that will get me the keep. The keep doesn't do anything right now, but I can now build the Siege uh, Engine, or the Catapult and the Ballista, which are advanced weapons. Uh, I need a lot of rope and wood for that. We'll see what happens. All right, I got three hits coming. I got Red Archer, Blue Archer, and Any Color Archer. I'm gonna play all of these. These are all worth one hit on some monsters. So we're gonna go Red Archer, Blue Archer, and then uh, Any Color Archer, which is gonna be over here. I could have picked anybody, but I just happened to pick that one. That takes care of three out of six. Uh, especially the one that was coming towards this open area, which is why I kind of prioritized that. Uh, still have to deal with these other imps, so let's see what happens. All right, this healer is going to take one damage from walking, and it dies right there. And then we have three imps coming. Not too afraid of that, but uh, the monsters are no longer missing. I get to pull some uh, more tiles. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Ah, oh, the second mini, the second mega boss. That is not, that is pretty hilarious. All right, so I don't have a Hydra mini, so I'm going to use this Basilisk as a stand-in. Uh, it has five points of uh, health, just like the Hydra does. Hydra's not that special. It's the, it, I mean, it has a lot of hit points, but every time you hit it, it um, spawns imps. Uh, those these little guys. So that's uh, really not something that I want to happen too often. See where it shows up. You show up on number five, leading the charge from the back over there. Okay, and I'm gonna pull again. Be nice to me. Plague Swordsman, that's actually pretty nice to me. I don't have any Swordsman. All right, we're back in the next, uh, for the next round. So because of the Hydra response to hits, I'm not gonna prioritize kind of dinking it because it's gonna spawn imps and kind of cause a lot of problems. I am a decent chunk of the way through the Castle Panic deck, and there's a couple of cards that do what that Hammer of Light card did in terms of slaying a monster, or I can slow it down, just to kind of like wait until I get the card that I need to kind of pop him uh, and, you know, do my thing. So there's a, there is a lot of strategy involved even in a simple game like this. But let's go ahead and draw. Okay, Red Knight, that is utterly useless right now. Blue Swordsman, uh, not promising so far. Blue Knight, there you go. That's much, much more like it. Uh, flaming, play this card with any hit to catch the hit monster on fire. So that's a, a strategy to get rid of the Hydra because, never mind. Uh, the <laughs> Hydra specifically says that it uh, spawns its imps when it does take any damage, not just from hits. 
so being on fire won't help me. <laughs> wow, that's uh, pretty sad. Uh, could draw from the resource deck. Um, I also have, I do have this one ring of fire, which is probably going to go away uh, or get discarded. So I only have one card left up to draw and that will be from the resource deck. Let's just go ahead and do that rope. Uh, that's, that's exactly what I needed. All right. So I am going to, because of the state of play right now, uh, I am going to get rid of ring of fire and flaming. Just flames just don't, uh, aren't going to help me right now with this current setup. So just keep the hand flowing. Uh, so I'm going to uh, draw another wizard card, Warstorm. Damage all monsters on the Archer Knight and Swordsman Rings of one color for one point. Whoa, that's going to get played right now. Look at that. Uh, it is in this the green ring, and that is out of here. Wow, very nice. That's much better. And then I'll draw from the... Hmm, I'll draw from the regular Castle Panic deck because I want to keep on milling. Red Swordsman, that, that's not going to help me too much at all. Uh, all right, so I am going to uh, play this blue knight and take care of the last of the imps. Bye-bye, imp. You are out of here. And I have a bunch of cards. Uh, I, have a, I have a lot of swordsmen, <laughs> which are completely useless. Uh, let's see if I can get... Uh, a, there's, other, there's also other cards in the Castle Panic deck that let you mill your hand. So I'm going to try to draw through the Castle Panic deck to get some of those better cards. Uh, so I don't have to do too much zooming in for the end of the round here. I'm going to move that one forward one. Doesn't do anything unless I hit it. Uh, all right, let's see. Oh, by the way, I forgot to do that. I'm going to put this rope over here on the engineer and declare that I am making the ballista. All right, so I pull two more tokens. The first one is a Herald. Okay, so uh, the Herald interacts with the with the Ragnarok expansion. Let me go ahead and show you how that works. Did I say Ragnarok? I meant Agnarok. <laughs> All right, so uh, the Herald gets placed there. It does not get placed on the field. Uh, I would discard one hit card of my choice. My pleasure. Bye-bye. Uh, uh, let's see. Red Swordsman, you are useless. Thank you for clearing my hand. <laughs> okay, so the Stonemason's cart is going to get placed in number six. Okay, that's not too bad. Uh, the way the Stonemason's cart works, it has two hit points. When I bring it in, I can repair walls. Uh, the way I bring it in is I can discard cards of its color uh, to advance it two, and then it, I discard regular cards to advance it one. So we know what this blue sword is going to do. It is going to bring home the, the walls. <laughs> I have one wall destroyed, and I have a feeling I'm going to get a couple more uh, pretty soon. So that was one. Oh, that was actually both tokens. So we are going to go on to the next round. So I have a hand of two cards to start this next round. I have a red knight and a blue swordsman, both of which are probably <laughs> discard candidates for one reason or another. Let's go ahead and draw another card. Nice shot. Play this card with any hit card to slay the hit monster. You see, that is what you wait for. The deck out for, there's a couple of those cards, and that's why I wanted to save my hits in the Hydra for a card like this. Uh, normally, the hitting the Hydra would spawn imps, but not the kill shot. So I'm going to wait until it gets to my way. So I was going to discard the Blue Swordsman. I still may discard the Blue Swordsman. It's, it's going to be two rounds before it gets there. Uh, but I do need to play that with a hit card. See what else happens. Uh, reinforce. Each player immediately draws one card of his or her choice from either the castle or the wizard deck. Okay, that's basically a free wizard draw. That's what that's going to be. Uh, and then I am going to pull two cards from the uh, deck over here. It's going to be brick and mortar. Eh, that's not great. Ugh. Wow. Hmm, I was really hoping for different cards there. So the cards that I just drew, brick and mortar, I'm actually going to discard. Uh, keep that going. Uh, I I can, you know, uh, it doesn't cost me anything. Once the resource deck runs out, I can just reshuffle, but I try. I want to try to get uh, something better, and boy, is that better. <laughs> there is Rope, and there is Jury Rig. Play this card as any one resource. It is wild, and I think that is going to be uh, played right now as Wood. I am going to discard two Rope and, or yeah, two Rope and a Wood in order to build my Ballista. So there is Ballista right there. It does uh, two damage 
uh, to any um, creature and then a damage to creatures behind it. So it's a little bit hard to see on the screen, but believe me, I have a ballista on my keep. Let me go ahead and show that what that looks like. That is going to look so cool. <laughs> Uh, on when the uh, final product comes out, and especially if you're going to be someone that's into painting. That's going to be really cool. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to discard Reinforce. Uh, each player immediately draws one card of his or her choice from either the castle or the wizard deck. So that is going to be from the wizard deck. I did not get my wizard pull this turn. Reign of Ice, no monsters move this turn. Remove all flame tokens from all monsters. Oh man, I thought I was going to remove the flame token from that wall. I didn't forget that. But that would... It's kind of a, a get out of jail free card for that Hydra in case it got too close. But I kind of want it to get close because I have this uh, Swordsman over here. Hmm. You know what? I am going to discard the Swordsman. I, I don't know how long that's going to take to get here. So I'm going to discard the Swordsman and the Knight. This would move the cart forward two and the Red Knight moves it another one. So then it would go that way and then that way into the swordsman ring. The benefit of that as well is that I can mill the card more because I really need a hit card to go with the, the, uh, this nice shot or there's other options to get a slay going. Okay, let me go ahead and pull two pieces from the deck. If this looks a little bit easy, I haven't gotten the draw four more tokens or summon a whole bunch of other things. <laughs> And I'm also being mindful of the Hydra, which, by the way, before I draw, the Hydra should move forward one to the Night Ring. Conjurer, speaking of summoning a whole bunch of things, Conjurer gets placed in the forest at space number six, right there. And also, I roll this die to see how many imps it spawns. So come on, nice low number, two. That's not bad. Uh, it's going to start in one and then two, so more imps to harry me. I don't think I've played this much of an imp game in a long time. I'm going to count the Hydra because I'm, it's affecting the way I play. All right, so that is uh, tile the first, and then second tile is going to be barracks. That's another helpful one. So I'm getting the helpful ones a little bit out of the way early. That's also going to be in number six. Uh, actually, that one, when the monsters move, uh, they actually can fight. It won't fight this turn because they just appeared, but after the monsters move, uh, I can get the, the, the these things, the helpful things, to fight one another. Uh, that's okay. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll uh, hold off on that one now, see how I do. Actually, never mind. I lied. There's too many tiles. I'm going to keep that, that error uh, in the video, though, just to articulate that when you play that combined game, <laughs> you don't have this problem in the Bathe Castle, Canic, uh, Castle Panic, but when you combine all the expansions, it's a lot to track. But the barracks are actually a bad thing. They're an encampment. They come from the uh, Engines of War expansion. They are a permanent-ish uh, uh, er, uh, feature of the land now. The first monster from uh, every turn drawn is going to appear in the forest where I put it. Uh, so I, I had rolled a green, so it is going to end up in green. So every monster, uh, every first monster, every turn is going to be funneling towards green, which is terrible because I have that fire there. <laughs> At least it's away from my wizard tower. So uh, that's, uh, that's okay. So uh, correction noted on to the next turn. And I have my two cards. I have my nice shot, which is great. And I have my rain of ice, which is my, uh, oh, please stop <laughs> coming at me card. And so I'm going to continue to draw through the panic deck. Blue archer. Oh, okay. Uh, I could have used you a turn ago. But uh, we'll see about that. Let's see. Change color. Play this card with any hit card or change the color of its uh, card. Eh, that's not so great. I'm not uh, very pleased with the hand this turn. Green swordsman. Hmm. Boy, I am not really having a good luck with this. And, hmm, let me keep on drawing from the Castle Panic deck. The regular one, Green Archer. Man, that is a giant whiff. Although I just don't have a lot of monsters, so that's probably a good thing that I don't have a lot of quality uh, candidates for that. All right, so during my discard phase, I'm going to discard Green Archer and Green Swordsman. Nothing in green, so I think I'm pretty safe doing that. Let's get another wizard card. I can have as many wizard cards as I want in my hand. Uh, extinguish wind. Remove all flame tokens from all walls, towers, and monsters. 
and move all monsters back one space. Actually, that's pretty good. Uh, that's very good. What? Okay. <laughs> now we're cooking with gas over here. I'll show you just in a second, but let me go ahead and finish my turn. That is a blue knight. Oh, okay. Uh, I was going to uh, use that to... I was going to use this flame thing to set things up with the blue archer. But now that I got the knight, I'm just going to get this over with. So I'm going to play the blue knight and the knight nice shot. One hit monster blue knight ring. You know what's going to happen now. Ugh! How you like me now? Play this uh, with any hit card to slay a monster. Yeah, I know it's a Basilisk. It's supposed to be a Hydra. You did not spawn any imps on me because I'm good at Castle Panic. Ugh! Yeah, get out of here. Alright, so that is the end of the turn right there. Uh, going to move this imp one right into the screen. Move that one and the Conjurer. Uh, remember that the barracks uh, stays there and the first monster that gets drawn each turn uh, is going to appear in bl at that blue. And I still have the Stonemason's card over here. That's for me. And that will help me reconstruct walls. So let's see what I get. Shaman. Shaman is a special character. It is going to be out there. It is going to start healing folks. Uh, don't know if I have the specific Shaman Mini. So let's go ahead and use the next best thing. I believe that is the Mini for the Healer. If you can kind of tell what that is. Uh, yep, it normally has two hit points if it is the basic healer, but it uh, instead as a shaman, it has three hit points. So this is going to pour out healing every turn, uh, makes it a pain in the butt to deal with. It is always going to appear on uh, room uh, arc number six as long as the barracks is there. And then the next tile I'm going to pull is Plague Knights. I have no knights in my hand, so that is going to be gone. Beginning of the next round, I have four cards in my hand. I don't know if I love that, so I'm going to definitely do what I can to empty this hand out a little bit. Uh, I do have my Ballista, so I think I can get firing on that one. That would be fun. Uh, okay, Biz uh, Barbarian. Ooh, slay one monster anywhere, including the, uh, the Castle Ring, but not the Forest. Uh, don't have a great use for it now, but that is a really good card. Probably the single best card, single card in the game. Because uh, it slays stuff without having to pair with another card. Man, uh, that would have been cool for the Hydra as well. And then I'm going to pick one from the Castle Panic deck. Green Hero. Okay. Uh, this is hit one monster in any, any ring. So that's really nice. So I am going to play the Green Hero with a change color. Uh, to get rid of one of the imps. Alright, so check this out. Now this is going to be really fun. So uh, I can I get a free turn of this once per turn, and the keep and so that's going to change to blue, and I think I'm going to point it at blue because I have that stupid barracks over there. But this is the fun thing. So then I'm going to play these two cards, but I'm not going to play them as they are. I'm going to target them with my ballista. Oh baby, the way the ballista works is that you target a space. And you need the two cards, but either you can, um, let's say I'm targeting that blue archer ring. I can do it with a blue swordsman and then a green archer, but I happen to have the blue archer. I just have to discard another card with it. So that'll be this rain of ice. And it does two damage. Boom, hits the conjurer right there. But here's the really cool part. It is going to do one damage to every creature behind it in the arc. So this goes from three to two. And then it actually does hit the barracks. The rules are very specific about that. Very few things hit the barracks, but the catapult does. Boom! Hits them for one each. So that's awesome. And I have still have my Berserker card, and I still have my Extinguishing Winds. So let's see. This would move all monsters back one space. I don't need to do that right now. I think I could save that for next turn. So then that's going to move forward one, and so are you. Uh, you are going to heal monsters there. So uh, that's not great because it heals itself too. So I'm going to want to... That is a three, I swear. <laughs> I'm going to want to kind of one-shot that one. Maybe, that, uh, maybe the Barbarian is uh, fit to take out that Shaman. We'll see what kind of other threats that I get. So that was the, the move phase. Let's see what I get in terms of a pull. Goblin Saboteur. This one is going to, I believe, um, banish cards if it gets to me. I don't love the sound of that. That's a four. Finally, a monster for the green ring. 
And then, well, actually, no. Uh, because of the barracks are still there, it's going to pop out in blue. And the next token pull is going to be a elite troll. <laughs> elite trolls are problems because they you can roll against them, but they miss on a one and two. You might be a candidate for the barbarian too. All right, going to appear in number three, all the way down there in the forest ring. All right, so I've readjusted for the next round. Uh, remember, I have two cards in my hand, so I get to draw four. My uh, Amazing Berserker and this Extinguished Wind, which uh, I think I might be used, well, I might use that today. But right now, I'm not sure. Let's see, let's keep on drawing from the Castle deck. Green Boiling Oil, damage all monsters in the Green Swordsman Ring. Ugh, that's a discard fodder, probably. We'll see about that. Tar, it's nice. Place a tar token on one monster, that monster does not move this turn. Sure. Uh, I could start, uh, I could uh, make progress toward the other thing that I can make, which is the catapult. Um, nah, I think I'm okay. I uh, let's see what else I can pull. Especially, I want a blue card so I can get the catapult firing again. So I'll just cut peep on pulling it through there. Green archer. That's uh, does next to nothing at this point. Knock back. Play this card with a hit card to move that uh, monster back. One space after damaging it. Man, that is underwhelming relative to some of the other cards uh, that I could have gotten over here. Uh, okay, so we are going to... All right, so we are going to take uh, Green Boiling All and Knockback. We're going to discard them. We're going to pull from the Wizard deck again. Teleport. Move any monster and play to another space or any fortified token to play it to another wall. Okay, a little bit of board manipulation. I really enjoy that. And another, I could pull another wizard card, but I am going to um, just pull from the regular Castle Panic deck. Any color knight. Okay, that one uh, might come in handy uh, next round. All right, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the green archer, and I'm actually going to move the stonemason's card over here. What's going to happen is the imp is going to move into here, and then battle with the stonemason's card is going to go down from two to one, but it's going to kill the imp. And now bring the Stonemason's card in next turn and, and repair this wall that's open. So uh, making, let that do what I want it to do. I'm also going to use Tar because I can. Gives buys me a little bit of time uh, on this elite troll over there. Look at how cute, how cute is that? Uh, for one turn, it is stuck in Tar. <laughs> Oh man, I have I'm I have too much fun with those kind of visuals. All right, so that is the end of the round. Uh, I am ending up with a hand of four cards, which I don't love, but I have a feeling that I'm going to be able to spend a lot of the cards next turn. So let's move that imp one, like I described. It's going to, to take the stonemason card down one, but it's going to uh, get rid of that, so that gets rid of all my imps. These two monsters are going to move forward, and the elite troll is stuck, but the the tower only lasts one turn. Let us pull and remember because of the barracks, all of that, all of those monsters will appear there. A goblin king. So the goblin king is bad news. Uh, it shows up and I uh, would normally roll, but it appears in the forest, like I said, and then it's going to draw three more tiles. Told you was, <laughs> if you were wondering uh, what the excitement is, it's the goblin king and tiles like that that make it exciting. So it's going to be four more tiles total during this pull. Great. All right, watch me draw the other thing that says draw four more monsters. Uh, so let's just keep track of that. Uh, all right, so another Herald. Let me go ahead and place that one right now. No! The Herald says, uh, if I place it over here, all players discard one special card of their choice. No! I only have one special card. It is the best card in the game, the Barbarian. No! All right, the next pull uh, of three left pulls. Wither, banish the top card of the castle deck. It is a red archer. I don't think that's going to make too much of a difference, but that could have been much, much worse. <laughs> uh, two more pulls left. It is a supply wagon. I think the supply wagons are good for me. So, wow, that's actually not end up being, ending up too bad at all. That is in ring five little bit far away from the spaces over there it has two hit points so if it reaches the middle of the castle it is going to make me draw two cards or let me draw two cards which i'm definitely going to want to do 
Uh, so I got a Herald, I got a Wither, I got that one. So that was the three from the Goblin King, and then the second, my second draw total. Draw three monster tokens. I knew it! I knew it! Oh boy. So uh, let's go ahead and get that over with. Number, uh, first one of three, the War Wagon. This is a Siege Engine. This is from the Engines of War uh, expansion. So we are going to roll that. It is going to appear in four. So what I have done is I have removed some monsters from the bag and I've replaced them with these uh, troll slash orc tokens. And they are going to be ba basically driving the wagon. <laughs> uh, from number four, uh, the War Wagon. So basically the war wagon is and there's a couple of other tokens like it it's going to move around depending on uh or it's going to cover some orcs and so i, I have to de defeat all this i have to defeat one then defeat the other so that's kind of a pain in the butt uh two more uh come on come on hasn't been too too bad oh breathtaker <laughs> uh the breathtaker is gonna um stop me from drawing the two card so i'm only gonna draw one card or discard and draw one card per turn uh, the Breathtaker, I need a mini for you. Let's use this Gargoyle. I think that the Gargoyle, uh, I think there's only one and I've already killed it. So let's go ahead and use that. Uh, so then it is uh, has three hit points. So as long as it has three hit points, uh, as long as it's out there, we'll be able to do the, do the draw and discard one deal. That's going to appear in number four. Right there, uh, right there next to the War Wagon. And then one last token. How many tokens have I drawn this turn? Okay, monsters move counterclockwise. So I have a lot of monsters at this point. Uh, see, Goblin King, everything moves. I don't think that was devastating to my strategy just yet. It's still annoying. <laughs> Wow, that was a lot of uh, tile pulls at once. Let's see how I, how I can recover from all of that. All right, so I have uh, three card pulls coming to me. So when I get Cavalier, place the Cavalier token in any arc of the Swordsman Ring. I will let you know what the Cavalier does in just a second, because I'm going to be playing that. Got a blue knight. Okay, that's actually uh, works out for me. And a red archer. So remember with the Breathtaker, which is uh, represented by the Gargoyle over there, uh, I can only discard and draw one card in a turn that is going to be the Red Archer. And I am going to pull from the Wizard deck yet again, Hypnotize, two monsters in the same space attack each other simultaneously. That's fun. All right, so that is definitely going to be, I'm going to play this one right now, and I'm going to let these two down here attack each other. I mean, it's not that devastating, it's just free damage, so this one's going to go down from three to two, and this uh, person right over here is going to go down to from three to two as well. All right, so here's where I get to have a little bit of fun now. I'm going to play this teleport that I've been holding on to, move any monster in play to another space or any fortified token. Uh, in space, but we're going to move a monster. I'm going to move this elite troll, which I think is really annoying, to this ring. Look at all that uh, nonsense that is over there. And we are going to first play a blue knight. And so the blue knight is going to hit the shaman over there. I haven't forgotten about you, shaman. Uh, it's going to go down from three to two, as you can see from the base right there. And then I am going to use the Any Color Knight and the Extinguish Wind. Uh, really breaks my heart to use a wizard card in this, but it specifically says I have to use two cards in order to do this. So it is going to hit one monster, but then, well, actually, it's not going to. It's going to fire Ballista in their faces. Bang! So that kills this Shaman. So that is two hit points right there, and it does one damage to everything behind it, including the barracks. All right, uh, so actually the supply wagon is over here, so it kind of overwhelmed the supply wagon. I wonder how that works. Uh, well, actually it doesn't, it doesn't matter because it's not gonna interact with that because it did not end the movement there. Uh, but the barracks still lives, but these monsters are all uh, knocked down one. Doesn't affect the supply wagon. 
All right, and the last thing I do is I'm gonna play this Cavalier. The Cavalier is very useful. Let's see if I could dig him out. So here is the Cavalier. It is going to interact and move on its own on the turn. Uh, I don't, it starts in a Swordsman Ring. I don't really have to uh, worry about it right now, but it's basically like it will, oops, sorry about that. It will do two damage to a bunch of things, uh, to things that it, that it fights. If it takes two damage, it's gone. Uh, it's immune to what if it takes one damage, but it's a nice little way to kind of uh, strafe and pick off some things. So I'm going to try to put it in front of the blue right there. I can either put it in front of blue or uh, green because green has these things in front of it. You know what? I'm going to put it in front of green. I think these, uh, these two over here are going to cause a little bit of problem. Uh, but yeah, I am really happy with how that uh, to work out with the ballista. Uh, really nice. Okay, so these two are going to move. These three are going to move. Supply wagon stays exactly where it is. I'm going to draw two more tokens. Equalizer. Five or fewer monsters add until six. So this is just in case there weren't a lot of monsters on the board. So I have five monsters so it doesn't do anything. And then the last token of the turn is going to be a Boom Troll. Uh, these things are kind of nasty when it comes to your walls. Oh, speaking of my die rolling is nasty when it comes to my walls. Uh, it is going to appear... Well, it actually, I shouldn't have rolled. It's going to appear in the barracks, which is... Uh, that's been there the entire time. All right. So I have been pulling liberally from the Castle Panic deck. Have ignored the resource deck for now. Maybe that might be uh, not the wisest thing in the world, but I still, uh, uh, decisions, good, uh, good. I've liked that. This game gives me things to think about. All right, so any color swordsman, nothing is that close, but that might come in handy in a bit. Uh, blue hero, oh yeah, that's gonna come in handy. Hit one monster in any ring of the uh, blue color. Green swordsman, that is disc probably discard farter. Uh, red Swordsman. Man, I'm getting a lot of things that are close. I don't think I love that. Uh, red Hero. That is much better. And then... Hmm, wow, a lot, a lot of... Um, I think I ran through a lot of my specials. And I am hmm, just don't think I'm going to go for the resource deck yet. Uh, let's see. Never lose hope. Immediately discard as many cards as you wish. For every card to discard, draw one castle card. Okay. I have a lot of trash here. <laughs> So I think I'm gonna do that. So, but let, first, let's discard some stuff. Uh, discard some swordsmen. Uh, going to discard a green and a red swordsman. Let's see what I get. Uh, I'm obviously pulling from the wizard deck. Red fireball. Damage one monster in, any, in the red ring. That's too bad. I don't have any monsters in the red ring. And let's go ahead and pull from the wizard deck again. Blue fireball uh, does basically the same thing. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take that. Uh, actually, you know what? I, I will definitely take that because I'm going to use this one. Damage one monster for one point and then set it on fire. That is going to be used on the uh, Elite Troll. So the Elite Troll, the one that I would have to roll for, it is going to take a damage and be on fire. Uh, not uh, just take a damage so I don't have to roll. And then when it moves, it's going to, it's going to put, extinguish itself, put itself out. That's really cool. You know what? I forgot uh, the breath taker is out, so I couldn't have done that second discard. Oh well, <laughs> too late to take it back. Uh, I'll uh, try to account for that at some point. Uh, I'm going to use the red hero and the blue hero. I'm going to damage the siege engine over there. Uh, remember, uh, I um, actually I should have rolled for this. Uh, it is going to roll a three, and on a three, it moves counterclockwise. So I did have a use for the red hero. Uh, so that is going to be, uh, the red hero is going to actually hit this thing for one, and then the blue hero is going to, um, it's going to hit this saboteur, uh, get rid of it. Uh, right there. So the last thing I have is the any color swordsman. I also have these two cards uh, Never lose hope and, and red fireball I think I'm gonna save the red fireball for when I take out this finally take out that uh, War wagon because there's trolls under there. I know that and then uh, never lose hope man 
Ugh, it's not gonna uh, do me too much good, I don't think. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna discard the Any Color Swordsman, and I'm gonna finally bring the Stone Mason's card in. At one hit point, it gets me back one wall, which this this guy might be rotating over there, so I think I want to get that going. I'm also gonna move the Cavalier here. They have two hit points, so when they move, they're gonna kill each other, basically. And I don't have anything else to do with my cards. I really wanna kind of discard this, never lose hope. <laughs> It's kind of gunking up my hands. I don't love that. But anyway, whatever. So then this is going to move, move, move. The elite troll moves. It is gone. This one moves together. They fight. This one has two hit points. It does two damage. This one has two uh, hit points. Takes two damage. They kill each other. Don't know if that was the best use of my cavalier, but I uh, got to do what I got to do. All right. So I'm getting, uh, this is actually pretty thin now. Uh, so it's maybe uh, another six or seven rounds before I'm done. Uh, so let's see what happens. Ooh, baby, the last Herald has appeared. All right, so that Herald goes here. All of these are discarded. This Prox, which is a giant boulder, which I'll do in just a second, but I just wanted to show you that I'm going to flip over Agnarok. Uh, so then this is the Agnarok that is showing up. I used a little bit of an, an easier one just for ease of the playthrough. But this is what you are looking at. After Agnarok moves, roll a die. All monsters in the resulting arc move additional space. So then it has a couple of other rules. Slay cards played against Agnarok deal four point of damage. Instead of its uh, full complement of hit points, I believe it's ten. When Agnarok flips to his wounded side, all players must immediately discard a card. Agnarok takes no damage from castle structures. Ooh, let's see what uh, the bad boy Agnarok looks like now. Oh, baby. Look at what happens when that thing gets painted up. <laughs> it is coming. All right, so that was the first monster pull. Let's see what I can pull for the second one. It is a Cyclops. So Cyclopses are in are hit. Uh, they're immediately slain in the eye if you can shoot them when they're in the archer ring, just like with the centaur and the knight ring. The Cyclops can be slain uh, one shot in the uh, Archer Ring. So it uh, the barracks is still there, so it's going to appear uh, over there. Actually, I did that wrong. This is the first monster, so this one goes over here, and then I have to roll for that one. A one appears right next to it. All right, I'm coming down to the wire over here. So, I mean, I've actually really, really done well with this, so I have a feeling I'm going to be losing some walls. <laughs> <laughs> before all is said and done. Uh, all right, so I got the Red Fire, the Never Lose Hope, that terrible card. Uh, let's see, Green Swordsman, that might be a Never Lose Hope fodder. Blue Swordsman, ooh, man. Uh, look, wow, Never Lose Hope is going to be justifying its existence. Um, and then, ooh, Berserk, I like Berserk. Uh, draw one card from a castle deck for every hit card you play during the remainder of your turn. Ah, uh, whoa, this is a... Terrible selection. Uh, that breath person is gone, so I'm going to take these blue swordsmen and discard them and draw wizard, oh, at least one wizard card. Let's see what happens. Wizard Quake, we destroy one tower and slay all monsters in the same arc as that tower. Wow. That is a really, really nice little uh, trick over there. Let's see if I actually resort to using it. And then I'll pull another wizard card. Why the heck not? Uh, the Burning Blast set all monsters in the same space on fire. All right, so the game is striking back. I have to really think about my resources here. First of all, I'm going to play this red fireball. That is a wizard card, and I am going to light the Cyclops on fire. That will just take care of it. So it'll move three. It's going to burn for three. I don't have to worry about it. Uh, I think I'm going to use Never Lose Hope. Uh, and I'm going to get rid of these two special cards that don't really do too much for me. And then draw two cards from the castle deck and see if I have better luck. They're the last two cards in the deck and they are two specials. Fortify Wall, that'll come in handy. And Change Range, that will not come in handy. <laughs> Oh boy, uh, let's see. Uh, 
I'm going to use fortify wall right away to fortify this wall because I have a lot of things to deal with over there. I could use all the help that I can get. Uh, so the fortify wall is pretty cool. That is what it looks like over there. And that is what a fortified wall looks like. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is this uh, burning blast set all monsters of the same space on fire. Another wizard card, so another card that could affect things out uh, in the forest ring. So because I don't have a spare fire token, I'm gonna use this trap. Uh, we're gonna understand that that is fire. <laughs> Uh, looks like fire though, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> not bad. And now I am going to use this wizard quake, destroy one monster and slay all the monsters in the same arc as that tower. Going nuclear! So you're going to destroy this tower right there. It is going to destroy the boom troll. The boom troll is bad news. That's why I wanted to get rid of it right up there. And the, uh, it damages Ragnarok for four uh, damage. It would normally slay any other monster, but not Agnarok. So it is going to go down from eight to four. So you can make out four right there. It is now bloodied. And when it is bloodied, it causes you to discard a card. Uh, that would be this change range, which is my last card. Don't really need it. And I can reshuffle the deck and begin to draw again. So that's actually helps me out a little bit. So there's nothing down in the green ring. So we're gonna move this guy forward one. We're gonna move Agnarok one. Uh, so that actually brings him down from four to three. Gonna move the Cyclops forward one. He is burning. This one is my problem. It's just gonna move over there and it's gonna bump into this and there's two trolls under here. I'm gonna need to do something about that. <laughs> or I might just let it like, you know, kind of beat up against here a little bit. I have no idea. Um, although, this is something I forgot to do when I summoned Agnarok in the first place. He does resolve a giant boulder. So let's see where the boulder went. Two, so the boulder actually does here. Uh, so this is kind of a retcon when Agnarok showed up. It's going to destroy this thing. Only destroys that thing. It does not do anything to the troll. So now I have two trolls here exposed. But, you know, we'll see what I can do with that. And then I have two more of uh, these tokens coming. The first one, move all monsters clockwise. Ugh, okay, I don't love that. Ooh, I really don't love that. <laughs> Ugh, all right. Gonna have to take that, take my medicine on that one. And then a necromancer shows up. The necromancer is the last of those uh, mega bosses I do not have. Uh, a figure for the Necromancer, so I'm just going to recycle this Basilisk right there and give him five hit points. What the Necromancer does, at least when he enters the game, is he is going to re, uh, take two monsters at random and put them back in the bag, lengthening the game a little bit. That is the first monster to appear this turn, so it's going to appear in that in ye old barracks. All right, so I am armed with a fresh set of reshuffled castle cards. Uh, all those good cards that I disc, uh, used and or discarded are back in place. So let's see if I get a few of those here. Going to need one. Nice shot. Uh, oh, oh, yes. Thank goodness. Let's see what I can pair that one with. Red Archer. Ooh, that one might be a good pair right there. Let's see what happens. Change range. That's uh, not the best that I could have gotten. Green Hero, although that is also, that's actually a pretty good one. Okay, never lose hope with that card. Ugh. <laughs> Always lose hope with that one. That's probably going to be discarded. And then green swordsman. Okay, I like that one right there. All right, so I am going to right now because I really want some wizards cards. Uh, going to get rid of going to get rid of change range and never lose hope and draw two from the wizard card deck. See what we got. Wall of Force. Move all uh, all monsters in one arc back to the forest. Ho, ho, ho! You know what? I'm going to use that one right now. Goodbye, trolls. Hoo, 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 hoo. Ho, ho. Yes. Thank goodness. That's why the, the wizard deck makes this fun. I think the wizard tower makes this is an essential expansion to fix the game. But that, what are you going to do? Chain lightning. Damage all monsters in the same space for one point. That could help too. 
Um, sure, let's go ahead and do that right now, as long as I'm messing with these trolls. <laughs> That's perfectly fine. All right, so I am going to, even though I have some fire set up for this thing, uh, the way the fire works for Agnarok is it will damage him down to two, but it can't, it, it, not enough to kill him. So um, I'm just going to not kind of take my chances on him at all. I'm going to use a Red Archer, nice shot. It's going to hit Agnarok, and that will do the last four damage and kill him. Bye. Bye bye. That was fun. <laughs> And I have these two cards as well. Uh, yeah, you know what I haven't been doing? I have not been um, taking care of this supply wagon over there. Like getting this to this castle is good because it would get me two cards uh, or, or two, uh, two card draws. So I am going to, I'm going to keep the hero because that's going to be good for the troll, but I'm going to use one discard and move that closer. All right, so uh, this is going to be an unfortunate thing uh, because in terms of monster movement, this guy is going to move forward one. That's okay. This one is going to destroy this wall, which would normally be okay, but it was on fire and weakened. So it doesn't do any damage whatsoever. It's not going to proceed inside the keep, but he's going to just be there annoying. <laughs> So that one's going to move forward. Hopefully I can take care of that. The Cyclops is going to move. I'm not um, at all bothered by that. Down to one hit point when it moves to the Swordsman Ring and it's going to die. Uh, so I'm okay. <laughs> it could be better. It could be worse. Uh, not too many uh, tokens left in the bag. I got a Herald. The Herald at this point is another monster. So the monster is going to get summoned at number five. And since Agnarok is gone, it doesn't really have another effect past that. So that is fine. Dark Sorceress. Let's see what the Dark Sorceress does. All right, so the Dark Sorceress is going to be represented by this, once again, uh, Star Wart uh, Healer Mini. So it's going to go ahead and get put to three. And it's going to be appearing just like normal. Uh, number five. Actually, why am I even rolling? It's this stupid barracks still out there. <laughs> uh, it is going to make me discard a card, so I have to discard this green hero, and then it, I have a max hand size minus one, so I can only draw up to five. <laughs> I don't like that. I got a ballista bolt right for your face. <laughs> Hopefully that works out for me. All right, I am going to draw. Uh, so for to begin my next round, so a blue knight. I don't know if, how much good that's going to do me. We'll see. Reinforce. Each player immediately draws one card of his or her choice. Going to be the castle of the wizard deck. Probably going to be a free wizard draw right there. Blue archer. That will come in handy. Let's see another blue archer. Okay, so that was four, and I have to manage. Yeah, keep in mind the fact that I can only do five green swordsmen. That's going to get discarded. And I'm going to draw from the wizard deck. Lightning bolt. Damage one monster for one point and then move that monster to any arc in the forest. All right. And then I am going to play reinforce. So draw another wizard card. That does mean for the wizard deck. Reign of iron. Damage all monsters of the same arc. Not the forest for one point. Nice. Oh, I forgot to move forward these trolls. All right, so this is where the barracks uh, and all the monsters kind of streaming towards that one area actually helps me. So then we have Reign of Iron damage on monsters in the same arc for one point. So that is going to be this Goblin King, which has been hanging around forever. <laughs> uh, that is going to be this thing right there. So then down to four hit points. And then this one is going to be down to two hit points. And also, uh, it's going to finally take care of the barracks right there. Actually, no, it's not because the card specifically states that it is only monsters that get affected by that. So I'm cool with that. Going to use these two blue archers and I'm going to fire the ballista with them. So uh, that, it's still pointed that way. This is going to be hit. 
So that is four, and then it is going to be down to two. So uh, four, three, two, right there. Once again, this is prototype components. So uh, 3D printed, you know, not that sturdy, but they uh, give you an impression of what's going on. Uh, this is going to be down to one, and then the ballista does take care of that thing. So that's very cool. And then the knight, I'm going to discard the knight and move the supply wagon a little bit closer. Remember, if I use the same color, it will come. All right, so now these trolls are going to move forward. This cyclops is going to burn out. Love when that damage over time. These are going to move forward as well. And let's keep on going. Okay, we have the Orc Warlord. Let's see what the Orc Warlord does. Right, so the Orc Warlord, uh, because the barracks aren't there, I actually uh, get to roll, is going to appear in ring number two. And then anything in that arc is gonna move forward, but there's nothing else in the arc, so it's just gonna move right there. Second token that I pull is going to be a trebuchet. So the way the trebuchet works, it's kind of like a boulder, but only for flying creatures. Does it, it actually flies over the monster, so it's not going to do too much to me, but it does affect my walls. So let me go ahead and roll for which wall is destroyed. The wall in five, so that wall is destroyed. And then the card, the token is discarded. So as you can see, my blue section is wide open. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I wasn't going to go the whole uh, the whole game without uh, some wall destruction. All right, I have one card. Uh, I still have that sorceress out there, so my hand size is five. I only draw four. Change color. Oh, that's not that exciting. Let's see what I get. Red knight. Mm, that is that exciting. Uh, at least with the change color, I can hit that uh, this guy over there. Missing. Do not draw any monster tokens this turn. That's getting played right now. <laughs> and then double strike. Play one hit card or special wizard or special or not a special. Aha. Twice this turn. Okay. So uh, this guy over here should have two hit points. Uh, so then I am going to... Yeah, ha not having the... Um, not having that fifth card from my hand is actually doing me pretty bad right now, but um, I'm actually going to change color to from the red knight to blue, and now it is as blue knight, and I have to discard another card with it uh, in order to make the effect go, so I'm using so it's a pretty expensive ballista bolt, but I think it's worth it because it is going to do two damage to him and one damage to him. That's going to wipe them both out. Good thing I invested in that ballista bolt. Man, that is sweet. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I actually you know what yeah I'm going to um I will use this I'll damage one monster for one point and then move that monster to any arc in the forest. This could be one of these trolls. It's going to move all the way back here, uh, and then so I just have I stagger them a little bit and get them out of the way. Okay, we are going to move them forward. Uh, this is a supply wagon. Uh, the monster is right there, and I'm going to pull two more. Not much left now. Reserve squad. Uh, so this is pretty cool. That helps me. Uh, so I have to do once more. It's one of those tokens where I have to like get it close to my area in order to, for it to do its thing. And siege tower. Just like the war wagon that brought those trolls, it is going to bring some baddies under it. And those baddies are two orcs. So then we're going to roll for that. Is again. In area number two so I actually have a pretty cool mini for this one uh, <laughs> uh, it is basically going to be parked in the the swordsman ring and it is going to deliver the orcs under there into the castle directly when it reaches there so you are annoying <laughs> I'll see if I can uh, get that taken care of all right we're reaching the end game as I count in the back there's only six tiles left See what I get. I get to pull my full hand of six. Red Archer, not useful right now. Enchanted, always useful. Play this card with any hit card for two additional points of damage to the monster. At this point, I think I've foregone uh, the, the Engineer. <laughs> you did your job building a keep in the Ballista. Everything else is just gravy. 
uh, Green Knight. Wow, I'm missing all my uh, good cards. Red Swordsman. Jeez. Uh, not really doing too much. Uh, another Green Knight. Boy, that is unfortunate. A lot of unfortunate things are happening with my hand right now. Blue Swordsman. So let's go ahead and cycle these. Uh, two Green Knight cards, nothing in the Green Knight area. So we are going to get some Wizard cards. Valador's Wave. Uh, I reshuffled, so I'm going to get uh, see a lot of the same Wizard cards again. Okay, uh, deliver four points of damage however I want, and then I'm going to draw another Castle card, Flaming. Play this card with any car hit card to catch the monster on fire. Ugh. So I have a lot of cards that just whiff. <laughs> but this Valador's Wave thing is going to be really useful. So uh, in any one color that is going to be red, that is going to be one damage to you. And then I'm going to get rid of this Siege Tower. I don't like the look of it at all. That is three damage to it. And then these Orcs are going to, um, they're, they're going to be out there. All right. So, I'm going to use this blue swordsman to bring in the supply wagon, which lets me draw two cards from the castle deck, because it has two hit points. Drive him back, move one monster back in the forest. That's pretty cool. And then blue boiling oil, damage all monsters in the blue swordsman ring for one point. Okay, so I'm going to drive back the troll Get back there, I don't like you. So then I'm actually gonna use the Red Archer and the Red Swordsman to bring in the Reserve Squad. Two and then two, it is gone and I get, it has, they had three hit points so I could distribute three hit points uh, around. It is going to be one, two, uh, the Warlord is out of here and then I'm gonna damage this Herald for three. Oh boy, I am feeling pretty good about that. Now, uh, I have some cards that I really that really don't combo well together, but I can't just discard cards. Uh, I have to kind of just keep that where they are. So let's go ahead and move those forward. It is coming down to the end, folks. Let's see what happens. Uh, only six tiles left, and now after this, there'll only be four. Doppelganger, let's see how that one works. So the way the double ganger works, it's just going to be there, and then the next monster slain, it is going to. Uh, so let's say I slay this troll, it is going to respawn in the double ganger spot. So we are going to move it to one, it is going to be there, and then the next monster slain will just be, will just get uh, that double ganger again. So I have to make sure to destroy kind of a weaker monster uh, in that case. I don't think that'll be too hard. Plague archers. I have no archers, so I don't discard anything. That wasn't bad. I think I can uh, weather that and have a good next turn. Okay, I draw three. Green archer. Ooh, I got a card for you there. Any color knight? Uh, yep, I have something in knight ring for you. Wow, I'm finally getting something, uh, some good stuff over here. Blue swordsman. Wow. <laughs> Holy moly, uh, that actually worked out for me pretty good. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to have too much to discard except for this. Let's discard this blue boiling oil and draw a wizard card. Reign of Iron. Damage all monsters in the same arc for one point. Ooh, wow. That is some real, uh, you know, turnaround stuff right there. We're going to use Reign of Iron. And we're gonna d damage these two for one. And then we are going to use the blue swordsman. And the blue swordsman is gonna slay the herald, but that uh, the herald is gonna respawn over here uh, as the doppelganger. Fine. <laughs> Perfectly fine. I don't, <laughs> that is, it just affected which monsters I destroyed when, but I just so happened to have a very weak monster and I was able to, to take advantage of that. Uh, all right, so I'm going to use any color knight to get rid of this troll right there. Uh, I know I know I'm not zooming in, but I feel like I'm in the zone right now, just like knocking off creatures. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to use this enchanted green archer. It's a little bit of overkill, but it's going to kill this troll that's been around for a pretty long time. 
So, oh man, I just wiped the board. Man, I love this game. <laughs> All right, let's move that forward. And I have a feeling I know which um, token I'm going to get now because there is a token hidden here that says draw four, and I haven't gotten it yet. So I might just pull it right now. That's not it. Troll Mage. Uh, so I roll to see where it goes. Goes in number two, and then it brushes forward everything. And that includes itself. And another monster that I pull is going to be roll and move. So we, let's just, uh, it's going to do a little bit of do -si do right there. So it is going to be three. So it's going to move ahead one. So this is going to move forward, move forward. And then this one is going to destroy themselves on the fortifications and the walls. So it takes it out. They take both of those out, but they take themselves out too, because they only had one hit point. So a good thing I tagged them before. Board is nice and empty, so I'm feeling really good about my chances. All right, this is the last round, really getting down to the nitty gritty. I have one card left in my hand, which is flaming. Let's go ahead and pull some more cards. Scavenge, search the discard pile for one card of your choice and add it to your hand. Would it be, uh, I think it's okay. Uh, I think there's some cards in there that I might look for. Uh, and I think I could scavenge for wizard cards, but uh, I'm not sure. We'll see. Green boiling oil, nothing in green. You are discard fodder. Mortar, oh, sorry about that. That doesn't belong there. Uh, and I'm, I've, I've completely ignored. <laughs> Once I built the ballista, I think I just said goodbye to the resource cards. So I have three, uh, three cards in my hand and I'm pulling uh, for three more. The Cavalier is back. Welcome back, Cavalier. A green knight, pretty... Any green cards that I get are gonna be useless and a red swordsman, good. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and cycle these two green cards. The wizard card that I'm going to get is a lightning bolt. Uh, damage one monster for one point and then move that monster back. Yes, so I'm going to damage the troll mage and move it back to the forest. And then let me pull another Castle Panic card, which is a blue knight. I don't need no stinking blue knight. Okay, I am going to play the Red Swordsman. The Red Swordsman is going to move the Herald from two to one. And then I am going to play... Welcome back, Cavalier. Shows up in the Swordsman Ring and is going to defeat the Herald and not actually take any damage, which is why I wanted to do it that way. So then I have two cards in my hand, uh, but I think I'm okay with that. So the Cavalier is going to destroy this at the end of the turn, and they can stay right there. The Troll Mage is going to move forward one. Uh, man, that draw extra cards uh, token, draw extra token token. <laughs> Uh, is lurking around here somewhere, unless uh, I'm, I'm imagining things. That's the one. Draw four monster tokens is going to be the last round of the game, or at least uh, the last monster pull of the game. I have um, as much time as I need to be able to try to you know, take care of everything. Okay, giant boulder. Those are pretty easy to resolve. Uh, you go one, and it is going to kill the poor cavalier. Man, <laughs> take out the wall right there. Uh, poor Cavalier, <laughs> you just can't catch a break. Uh, the Forward Camp, wow! Uh, this is a new one, just like the Barracks. Uh, it it covers monster spawns, but this late in the game, it just doesn't do anything. So it is going to appear in blue, and the monsters would have been spawned in the Archer Ring, but it doesn't do anything. I do not have to beat that thing in order to win the game. Uh, and then the last token in the bag is... The battering ram. So it's going out on kind of a bang. So it is another one of those things that carries two orc tokens. I was wondering where that was going to be. And then it, it appears at the forward camp. So it appears a little bit forward. Good thing I have that to defend myself. So that's okay. All right. So I have two cards and I'm going to be drawing four more. Got a red swordsman, completely and utterly useless. Red archer, the opposite of useless. I like the sound of that. Green archer, that's okay. And then green archer. Okay, so we know what that means. We are going to take those two cards. 
they're gone. And we are going to pick the wizard tower right there. Extinguishing wind, remove all flame tokens from all walls, towers, and monsters. Move all monsters back one space. Eh, that could have been better. And fortify wall. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, uh, that could have been a lot better in terms of offense anyway. I just need to end the game at this point. All right, so let's go ahead and take care of that uh, Troll Mage with a Red Archer plus Flaming. That's going to do one damage and put it on fire, so that's going to take care of it. So when it moves, it's going to put itself uh, kind of in firing, uh, or it's going to kill itself, basically. Look at that. I was a ragged on this card the whole time, and now I'm going to use it because I have so many bad cards. <laughs> Oh man, so I'm going to use that and I'm going to discard three cards and then draw three cards from the castle deck. There we go, blue knight. And to pair with this other blue knight, that'll come in really handy for that one when it moves next turn. Any color archer, I could use that right now actually. And do a point of damage to the battering ram. And then... The Barbarian, yes! The slay one monster anywhere, including the castle ring, but not the forest. Going to save that one. All right. So this will be really easy. We are going to move that one. It's going to burn itself out. We are going to move this one forward. And there's no draw whatsoever. Let's go ahead and finish this off. Red hero. Swordsman. And swordsman. We are going to get rid of the swordsman to... Uh, let's hopefully draw something more useful. Wall of Force. I don't want to move anything back. And then Castle Panic, the Red Boiling Oil. We're just basically drawing through cards at this point. Uh, I, we are going to use the Blue Knights, two Blue Knights, to get rid of this thing. There are some Orcs. What? What is happening over here? Using a Barbarian to destroy one of these Orcs right there. And... I don't have another thing to use, but I am just gonna keep on going. It moves forward one. Red Knight, I still that still doesn't help me. Blue Swordsman, that does help me. I just need one hit point left. Blue Hero. Blue Swordsman and Blue Hero destroys the Orc. That is a game of Castle Panic. Wow! Uh, <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of looking up different, uh, you know, tokens and everything does something different if you're playing the shuffle together game. If you want to play the simpler game, that is totally up to you. It's just orcs and trolls and things that are really easy. So it can really variable from easy to hard, uh, complicated and tactical to breezy and simple. I really, really enjoy this game. It's very exciting. Uh, and, you know, as you can saw that there was definitely moments where I was kind of worried, but then I would get this, uh, the great wizard card that would just, whoa. Uh, turn the whole game around. So I hope that you enjoyed that. Uh, please go ahead and consider a lay pledge. Um, but either way, uh, that is Castle Panic the Big Box. This is Jason from the One Stop Co-op Shop reminding you that we'll see you at the next stop.